G'day, g'day, g'day again from my creation guy, John Mackay, down under on a hot, humid day as we head towards Christmas. You're doing Christmas as well, but have you heard the news about the Christmas star? December 21st, 2020, two planets are going to pass cut so close they'll flare up. And it's given rise to all sorts of statements about this planetary conjunction being the original Christmas star. Well, 3,000 years ago, the psalmist wrote this. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Psalm 8 verse 3. Yes, it's the old King James and it's there for a reason. Um, the experts tell us this conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn last occurred about 800 years ago. Just after the Normans invaded England and they brought with them a word, considered. You see, their old Latin French language had that word, and now it's in our English language. Uh, you first come across it in the Coverdale Bible, and the date here I've got is 1535. But that didn't make it popular. The King James Bible in 1611 did, and it's used as a translation for the Hebrew word R-A-W-A-W, -A -A raw, I guess you could say. But did you know the Latin word for star actually is S-I-D-E-R? And that means the word consider or consider means with the stars. Now, this star event, according to the experts, happens every 800 years. So it last occurred in the 1200s. Before that, it would have been the 400s. Before that, it would have been 400 BC. So rest at ease. This conjunction can in no way be the original Christmas star of the Lord Jesus Christ and the wise men only 2000 years ago. But what's interesting is it's so predictable, you can predict it forwards and you can predict it backwards. Astronomy works like clockwork. And it's that predictable regularity of this Christmas star, which is what the psalmist is referring to when he says, you have ordained the moon and the stars. Ordained? Usually we use that in, in a religious sense, set aside for a holy purpose. It's a plan. And you know when you can first read of this ordination, the purpose and plan giving to the stars? It's in Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 to 19. God made the sun, the moon and the stars for signs and times and seasons. And beyond a shadow of a doubt, the wise men 2,000 years ago saw a sign. They somehow knew what this sign meant. Oh, that's what our big webinar is all about on Friday evening. Keep watching, go to our website, find what the details are. But they set out following a sign. They set out in faith. And when they got to Jerusalem, the record tells us that the, they, they discovered from the priests, not from the star, that this new king they sought would be born in Bethlehem. They believed in faith. They heard the word of God and they obeyed. Now, you remember the story, the wise men came to give gifts, they came to worship him. So our whole aim in this series, which is occurring every day, is to get you and ourselves to worship him and to recognize that the same Jesus, the creator, you did catch that again? One of our emphasis is that all things are made by Christ. Nothing was made without Christ. Christ is not only the savior who was born in Bethlehem 2000 years ago, he is the creator who set up the stars and ordained the purposes for them. He set aside the stars for a holy purpose, gave them a motion, a plan so that 2,000, 3,000 years later, they'd be exactly where he needed them to be. 4,000 years, they'd be in just the place so the wise man could see them and understand and head towards Jerusalem. How did he do this? Well, I'm sorry, you'll have to catch us on Friday evening. Have a look at creationresearch.net. Click on the Christmas webinar, Christ the Creator, King of Christmas, and find out all the details for each night. And actually, there's a great um, Christmas brochure on there as well. This is the Creation Guy, John Mackay. Look forward to seeing you on Friday evening.